Hello again everybody and welcome back to the channel. I am Mixnazzy and today we are back in Planet Zoo for episode 4 of our new Ranger Park Zoo series. If you haven't seen episode 3, the link is in the description below to the playlist of the Ranger Park Zoo series. You can go watch it there. If you don't feel like watching it, I can give you a recap right now. We made a cool looking butterfly house and finished a little bit more touch up work in the front entrance area. Now we can really move out to doing other things like what we are doing on the screen now which is building a backstage sort of warehouse. Now this is like, I kind of wanted to go for a barn sort of feel here for this backstage warehouse. Um, it's, it's behind all the buildings like the uh, staff center and everything and I did mention in previous videos that I was going to be putting like a whole backstage area. Um, in here with warehouses, barns, etc. Things like that in order for us to uh, really hit the realism on the head here because we really want to go for a realistic vibe in the zoo and I think it's a it's a fun challenge to try to go for that extra realism like building backstage warehouse areas where they you know house feed stuff like that you know equipment for habitats um, etc. So I think it's it's more of a challenge and it's it's really interesting to kind of think of it like that. Look at zoos on Google Earth and Google Maps in order to see, hey, how many like buildings do they have in their like staff areas backstage that you would never see when you're in the park itself. So that's really what we're trying to do here. If you haven't been watching um, the previous videos and that's really the history behind this build. I do like how it turned out. It's pretty bland, like a concrete barn structure, but I didn't want to go for the basic barn, so we do a little bit of a, a cool roof here with uh, a bunch of separate sort of roofs and sort of triangle patterns. Now in this episode we're not going to necessarily finish the whole area of this backstage area. I've been kind of trying to space that out between videos because I know it's, it's a little more boring than watching me build exhibits or filling out the zoo with animals. So I've been, I'm going to try in future episodes to do a little bit of the backstage area until it's finished along with the uh, exhibit or something. Now there's not a lot more of the time lapse of this building that we're building here but what I wanted to do was build a lot of barn doors so you can really open this up and it's sort of like a warehouse where uh, there's just a bunch of these big like truck doors that you can uh, get goods in and out from easily help ventilate the building as well so you don't necessarily have to pay for uh, ventilations or something like that and that's kind of the idea of why I put the um, skylights on the roofs there so you don't necessarily have to light it a lot because there'd be a lot of natural light coming in from those skylights up there and I think it just looked cool as well which is also an aspect that I'm trying to go for the majority of the time anyway. Now this building ends up being just hollow there's not actually anything inside of it but I think I may put go back and put some staff buildings inside of it because um, the staff building bottleneck will happen at some point in the zoo and I think uh, having a lot in these empty buildings will help with that. Now right here I'm trying to build one of those like semi truck platforms like loading platforms here. I feel if like a semi truck comes in and they back into it the, it, the warehouse would need something like this. I've seen this on the back of a lot of warehouse buildings like we're by, by where I work and it's sort of like level with the trailer that would back up to it so it's a little raised and they usually have like two or three of those I mean you can see them on the backs of like uh, Walmart or something like that a grocery store if you've ever driven back there but I thought it was a realistic aspect that was something to think about because I'm sure a zoo like this would get shipments of feed uh, any sort of supplies maybe mulch stuff like that because it is a zoo at the end of the day and there's a lot of stuff uh, that goes into maintaining zoos I am sure. I'm not an expert on it but I would think with it being such a big and intricate complex place that there'd be a lot of uh, shipments coming in of many different things but enough of that let's look at what we're doing now. We are building our exhibit for this episode. Uh, I decided to go with the spotted hyena for this episode as our animal. Our second well actually it's our third animal in the zoo if you count the uh, the first enclosure that had two but our second enclosure in the zoo, and I'm really happy with how it turned out, I went for a lot of realism here along with uh, what would make the animals happy as well. And uh, really it's sort of the idea that I will be doing for the remainder of the zoo is we're going to go for a lot of realism, but we're also going to make the animals happy at the end of the day, even if I did turn off a lot of the uh, 
uh, aging and stuff like that. But uh, I really want to go for this realism hard in this series, and that's sort of the biggest aspect that I hope will bring people to come watch this, because I'm really going to be thinking a lot about the backstage. And it comes with this uh, habitat as well. I do a lot of realism aspects on this habitat, other than just making it look like it's, you know, a real uh, habitat that would exist in a zoo, and that makes the hyenas happy. I b end up building a whole like area for them to go in the winter, a whole enclosed area that's kind of disguised as a cave for them to sleep in so they can get away from the guests if they get stressed out, stuff like that. And I think a thing that I'm going to need to think about is since this is a set in the Midwestern United States, there is winter and a lot of these animals aren't really used to having winter with snow and all that get out. So I'm going to have to build a lot of... Uh, sort of behind the scenes structures where the animals can you know get taken care of maybe if they have to get like haircuts or you know shots something like that the vet will have an area to groom them and uh, feed them stuff like that or if they get pregnant and you know they have to have an area where they can have their babies etc so i think uh enclosed sort of controlled space where they can go in the winter and still you know be happy um, where they can get like grooming done, stuff like that. The behind the scenes stuff that you're not necessarily going to see when you're visiting the zoo, but the zookeepers, I'm sure, do with behind closed doors necessarily. Not, not that it's like a bad thing, not that I'm saying it's a bad thing, but it's something that you don't see when you go to the zoo. Um, it's, it is behind closed doors and it's some of the aspects that you don't think about. So I think we need a lot of these buildings on almost every habitat that I can think of where they can take care of the animals when they need to and where the animals can go during the winter or when they're stressed, they can go inside these buildings. So I know I didn't do that in the first uh, first animal enclosure that we made in here because I wasn't necessarily thinking about it then, but now I think that's a big thing that I'm going to be going for for almost every habitat. And I did also think about the next animal that we're going to be doing in next episode and we're going to be doing the same sort of feel and I do talk about that a little bit in the real time portion at the end of the video. So yeah, that's uh, that's really the whole thing. Give you guys the rundown about that. Now what we're doing on the screen here is I'm just sort of building this back wall area. I don't want to make the whole thing an area where the the guests can see the animals because that stresses them out. I'm going to have to go back and change a little bit of how the tapirs and the anteater exhibit is. Uh, laid out because the animals are getting stressed. I did get some notifications when I turned the park on with the hyenas to take some cinematic shots. So I'm going to need to go back and add a little bit more foliage so they can hide from the guests if they need to so they don't get super stressed out. But here I am adding these rocks onto the face of this building because I see this a lot in the zoos um, in real life. Uh, if you look on the Google Maps or the Google Earth views or if you you know look up buildings like zoo buildings um, like this they have this sort of uh, you know plain concrete building top but then they have the uh, the rocks out front so it kind of looks like a cave and it uh, sort of tricks the animals I guess and it also tricks the guests because it looks like there's like a uh, you know actual rock cave there for them to go hide in and sleep in etc so it may be a challenge to do some of these buildings in the future. This one I found sort of uh, not too complicated to implement here because we did have a lot of open space, but maybe in the future when we have sort of tighter spaces and we're trying to finish out a little bit of the zoo, it might take a little bit of uh, intuition and uh, you know creativity to fit these buildings in there and have them work. But for this one especially, I ended up putting some staff buildings inside of it anyway in order to spread out the staff buildings a little bit. Because I remember my last uh, zoo project, when the zoo started getting bigger and bigger, um, we sort of ran out of staff buildings and the staff would have to walk from all the way over at the start of the zoo where the staff center was all the way to the back in order to get the animals fed. And sometimes the animals wouldn't even get fed because it would be too far of a distance for them. So I kind of want to spread these out. And these, sort of, and these sort of like buildings for, you know, the winter grooming and they're kind of shelters that we're going to be building for a lot of these habitats actually help out a lot because you can fit staff buildings in every one of them because it's sort of hidden behind the guest's eyes and they're not going to see it. We're going to hide it by fences and stuff like that and a bunch of trees. So yeah, 
that's uh it's really gonna help out a lot in the future of the zoo and it's a nice just bonus aspect in terms of realism and everything so for this habitat i wanted to go for sort of savanna you know african savanna grassland sort of feel and i love these uh these trees that we're putting in i have no idea what they're called but i'm sure you can see what they are um they're quite sort of the go-to when i think of african savanna so I'm definitely going to put a lot of those in future African Savannah uh, habitats and I think they look great in this one and I ended up putting a little them outside of the uh, habitat here on sort of the planters that we're going to put between the fence and the sort of um, pit that is around the habitat in order for you know safety of the guests and safety of the animals from the guests as well you know it goes both ways there. So you know I'm going to do that off camera with this whole realism uh, sort of planters fence um, combo and I'll show you guys in the real time portion why I sort of went for that and I'm really happy with how it turned out but uh, maybe one day we can use those big uh, big trees there I've always I've never found a use for them so far but I've really always wanted to use them in an African setting so maybe when we do the apes or something which I think could be coming up in the future soon since we didn't get to it last time in our other zoo project so yeah, now we're just going to be finish up the foliage, putting a little bit of uh, habitat stuff down, doing some terrain work here with the painting and everything. And uh, you can do this with yours. Put the Use the heavy soil to make these sort of ruts where the animals would, you know, assume would walk around a lot. It makes it look a lot more natural and like they're like actually using these paths to run around them. So I think that's a, a cool realism aspect you can use in your own zoos. But really, the rest of this uh, time lapse is just me doing a lot of this foliage work. So I will let you guys watch it and I will see you in the real time portion. If you want to skip to that, there is a timestamp in the description that'll tell you where to skip to. Hello everyone, we are now back in the real time portion of the video and I want to show off what we did in this episode. 
Um, I did a lot of work off camera um, in this one, so uh, the time lapse doesn't really show everything that was made, but I think it's all right. Let's actually go back here first. Let's show off what we did in the backstage area, since that was the first thing you would see in the time lapse. Um, not finished, of course, <laughs> as most uh, most of the stuff back here isn't finished. But I just wanted to add an animal really bad in this video. So this is our big warehouse building where we're gonna put I don't know a lot of uh, animal stuff, uh, feed. They'll store things for habitats, maybe fake rocks, stuff like that. So for here, I wanted to do sort of the semi truck backup. So it, when you see these on the back of buildings, they're always raised a little. So when the semi-truck backs up, it's like walking straight out on a level plane. So I tried to judge it with this Jeep. Um, of course, we don't have a semi-truck in the game, so I couldn't give the exact, but I think it turns out well. Um, a couple of big barn doors over here for um, just access. And we have these doors for staff access that need to be a little closer to the building, actually. Yeah, they do. Um, lots of big, big doors back here for you know trucks going in and out you can open up the warehouse get a little bit of air coming in stuff like that that's what I thought would look you know or would actually functionally work well because I feel like that would be needed and this is just a way for them to go in and out easily and I thought a lot of doors like that would you know work and I like the shape of the building we kind of made it a little more interesting than a big old barn which is a lot of these big warehouse buildings look like so you know a little bit of pattern on the roof there and if I go back a little you can see like the windows up there so there's some natural light going in through each of those little spots so I feel like they wouldn't necessarily have to pay for big lighting in here because light would be coming in and <laughs> as I go inside and there's nothing in there because you know we want to save on pieces not make it too laggy too early um, these are a workshop item piles of junk um, I'll link it in the description I'm not sure who makes it off the top of my head here but they look great in this space just along the side here and these little things I uh, wanted to show sort of little dividers that would house mulch maybe some animal feed maybe different soils for different environments maybe some gravel stuff like that too bad we don't have a ton of stuff that would fit that category in the game so I can't put a ton of it back here but as you can imagine this is sort of a realistic aspect that I'd like to put in um, even if we don't necessarily have the pieces so these sort of like hay rooftops kind of work and then I made like a little bit of a mulch pile, but it doesn't look all that great. But once we add the other two backstage buildings here, I'm not entirely sure what they're going to be yet. Maybe just a couple barns, something like that. And I might put some uh, staff buildings inside it. I might even put some staff buildings inside of here um, as well, because there's tons of space in here. Just so we're in the, we don't get bottlenecked by staff buildings later on in the zoo that's sort of the object there but let's go check out the uh, hyenas this is the big build of the um, episode and the backstage access here is perfect the zookeepers can go and access the hyena exhibit but I'm gonna go at it from the actual way that you would go if you were attending the zoo because I think it's uh, a little more cinematic so a lot of people walking out from it because they just saw it but let's go in so this is your entrance here we're gonna go out this way that way up here I think we're gonna build a little food court in future episodes but I'll go over that more of that later here we have the spotted hyenas and I love how wooded it is in here it's perfect and I wanted to add some trees in here and it looks a lot different than what you saw in the live stream or in the, the time lapse sorry what I've done is I've added fence here I've added mulch here as well and we're gonna go down Oh, I guess it doesn't work I can show you when we get out of first person but I've added a concrete retaining wall around the whole outside so I was a little conflicted here of what to do because with this exhibit the uh, anteaters we kind of just have the fence right up next to it and so you could honestly just jump in but when I was looking at a lot of the street views of some zoos for a little bit of inspiration and to get some realistic aspects aspects going I saw a lot of exhibits have big concrete retaining walls they'll have these dips as well so you're kind of like on the level with the animal but they can't escape at all they could never get to you and this kind of limits you from being able to throw stuff in jump in yourself uh, if something ever were to happen there's a big planter area 
that will stop you from getting in there. And I saw big planter areas between the retaining walls and the guest fences and a lot of exhibits with the uh, zoos that I'm looking at. So I think this was a great realistic aspect to put in, and I think it looks great. Um, in a lot of these, they have just very, a lot of mulch, not a lot of vegetation, just separated little bushes that are easy to care for um, throughout. So that's what I did here. It may look a little bland, but I think it's more realistic than anything. That's more of what I wanted to go for here. But it's a nice little area. We added some education signs and everything, and I think the hyenas are happy. They have a lot of space here, for sure. <laughs> And it really looks like their habitat. I didn't want to put too many trees inside there because it is grassland. So I wanted to leave a little bit of it open. But over in these planters, we have some of those trees as well. So the hyenas don't feel super stressed all the time. Like guests are constantly looking at them. Because um, there's a lot of foliage blocking the, the whole body of the guest. So maybe, and I don't know what's going on here. That's sort of glitched out. Um, some food for the hyenas. I'm sure they're not too happy about that. But... Yeah, so there's areas where you can see, areas where you can't, areas that you can partially see and they're kind of blocked, and I think that's perfect. It's realistic, so the animals aren't always super stressed, and you really have to, you know, find the spot that's good. So we're forcing certain views other than having it just wide open everywhere so that the hyenas are constantly stressed. So let me jump out of first person now, and we'll show a little bit of an aerial view here. Aerial view of the warehouse first, because that is something that is important. I think it looks great. The skylight, sight line of it's great, but we also want to cover it up. So I put a lot of trees on the outside there because that does matter as well. And along with that, this little area looks well as well, good as well. I think I'm gonna put some, uh, some maybe paint there, like uh, maybe some parking lines, something like that. I just break up the black uh, asphalt there. But lots of vegetation and foliage over here in this sort of building I'm gonna have another exhibit on the other side here so it's kind of be like a dual exhibit that shares this uh, this building here and the big reason why I wanted to build this building if I didn't talk about it too much in the uh, time lapse was you know the hyenas need somewhere to go during winter because this is a Midwest Zoo they're not really acclimated to winter so they need somewhere to go in the winter so they need sort of a, a bigger area than uh, the anteaters and the tapirs, which I guess they would also need a big area too, but they might get put out into uh, like a little warehouse over here. They have little animal pens for the winter, maybe something like that, but these are bigger animals. They're pack animals, so they need sort of a bigger place, and I wanted to do that over here, and we're going to shove some staff buildings inside as well, and for the next animal we put over here, it's going to be sort of the same here. Not sure who or what animal it's going to be yet. I have an idea, and I think it will be African themed as well. But I won't spoil it. You'll have to tune in next time to find out which one we do next. But yeah, I'm really in love with this habitat. Really happy with how it turned out. I think it looks great. I think it's realistic, and I think it's a nice extension of our zoo. We're going to be looking to do a little bit of a food court here. And yeah, that's about it. So thank you folks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys again for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help out the channel and lets people see it more with the YouTube algorithm and everything. But thank you guys, and I will see you next episode where we're going to do another animal and some more stuff to the park. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.